It's Tom with the Wonder Twins, the Hill Twins. <laughs> so good. Uh, this is Delaney, the delightful Delaney, and the awesome Aiden. Uh, Aiden is Delaney's little brother. Uh, not uh, by age-wise, but by, by height. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, Delaney's going to try to get into this box. We've got something. We've done a box of graded, of, uh, graded cards before, and we're getting ready to get into them here in a second. I don't even know where to start. This thing, it's just tape. The whole thing is just tape. Okay, so... Don't do that. Yeah, ripping. I, I think cutting would be better than ripping. So does she have trouble, like, cutting birthday cakes and stuff, oh, too? No, I'm not supposed to. I don't fucking cut my birthday She's cake. Alert. You don't cut your own birthday cake? I don't cut my birthday cake. I don't serve for everybody? No. Okay. I can't remember the last time we had a birthday cake, to be honest. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, honestly. Okay. okay. It's open. It's open. Okay. We'll okay. just go that way rather than you you're trying to pick out which one. Because okay, you always yeah. pick the best one first. I get the... Well, now it's the back, so I don't even know what this is. Oh, it's Star Wars. Boba Fett, number 1980. Where's the grade? At a 7. Near mint. Okay. Which, it isn't bad, because this one's really really off-center, as you can tell. See how the uh, borders oh, are much different? Yeah. So I knew that going in, but I also knew it was a fairly high grade. And trading cards are just getting hotter and hotter. Um, for about a twenty-five dollar investment, I should be able to sell this one for around hundred bucks. Okay. Okay. That's a lot. Now we got a Pokemon, a Charizard Hollow at a number six. So what is this? Um, I didn't check the market before we started, but I would say it's probably around six hundred, maybe a little less. But it's not a first edition, but it's definitely early. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We have another Charizard at and at the Japanese print. And a number five. Oh, this one in English? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. In this, like, it's the same card, but even the, like, the background, this is, like, deeper, or deeper red. You well, know what I mean? Uh, but this one's also from 2000, 2016. This is a reissue. Oh, I didn't Where that. this one is from 1999. Oh, jeez. But they do look, you gotta be, yeah. That's you. That's all you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not doing so, that. So, this one, they wouldn't grade because it's a controversial card. We'll get to what? it here in a second. They wouldn't grade it. Nope. And I'll show you why. Okay. Is that um, magic? Yeah, it's Magic the Gathering. I actually sent it in for a customer of mine. The name of the card is Invoke Prejudice. And if you look, the, the characters on the card actually look kind of like clan members. They definitely do. <laughs> so it's considered a controversial card, and PSA won't grade certain trading cards. Like, I've got a set of serial killer trading cards. It's Jeffrey Dahmer, mm -hmm. um, John Wayne Casey, and things like that. They will not grade those. Uh, I didn't know that they wouldn't grade this one, but Beckett, I contacted them after they refused it, and Beckett says they'll grade it, so I'll be able to send it in. But this is this has become more and more viable, and it's all just because yeah. of, uh, of cancel culture. Yeah. Are there any Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But, so it was, like, recently they, they stopped. Last, I want to say... Two or three years ago, people really started talking about yeah. that it looked like that, and it was hurting people's feelings. So, PSA gave up on it. But That's crazy. I don't know CGC well because I went with Beckett um, to to find out for the next. They're like the next level grading company, so I didn't ask CGC if they would grade it. But PSA is cool. No. Yeah, that's a cool story. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> now we have a Blastoid Hollow. I don't see any spark or swirls in this one, but it's at four. Is that good? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the big three, for the early ones, yeah. The big three are Charizard, Blastoy, and um, Balzar. Oh. Uh, or no. Uh, so it's Charizard, Blastoy, and then Delaney just pulled out Venusaur. Venusaur. Okay. So that's going to look kind of magical because all of a sudden, poof, she's got it in her hand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, I'm going to do a little edit there. Oh, oh that's um, it. But these, these are considered yeah. big three. So Charizard first, and then I think Blastoy, and then Venusaur. Four, five, six. Okay. Yeah, and we have four, five, six. <laughs> um, but these tend to bring the most value. Uh, there's a couple other books that there's uh, books, cards, cards <laughs> that they're speculating on that um, might really start to jump up in the world of Pokemon, especially the vintage stuff. But how do people speculate with this kind of stuff? Because like, I mean, with Marvel, you can speculate with what's being made now to hype what was made back then, but like. Well, there's anticipation. Speculation isn't just Marvel says that they're going to do a Black Widow mo movie and it's going to have Red Scare in it. Oh. So that's going to make Red Scare's comic first appearance all of a sudden go through the roof. Mm -hmm. okay. There's people who follow the actual storylines and they go, okay, they're headed this direction. 
and they try to anticipate where the stories are going. So they'll buy even before everybody else gets crazy, and they tend to clean up. Stories with like so, the video games coming out now, or well, the video games, the video games probably will jump just like comics have because of oh, movies okay. and things like that. Because it's people want the cross collectible. Um, so, so I don't know. I mean, it's speculation is tough because if you live by speculation, most people will go broke. But it's just like the stock market. It, you know, people hear about a company or whatever and they speculate on it and think that it'll make them a bunch of money because they're like, yeah. like I bought when I heard that Howard Stern was moving to satellite radio. He didn't announce which companies he was going to. So I immediately bought stock both in Sirius, Sirius and um, X. XM. 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 XM yeah. uh, thank you. Glad you're here. So so I immediately bought stock in both of them. And then when he said Sirius, I moved it all from XM to Sirius. So oh, that Sirius XM was one thing. It eventually became oh, one after, okay. so after, I was after like... a period of time. Because Howard <laughs> went to Sirius, Sirius got large enough that they could actually acquire XM. But prior to Howard going, XM was actually larger. Yeah. Oh, this isn't well, about cards anymore. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> about, it's, about, it's about speculation. Yeah, yeah. And, and was, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, okay. it's about being able to try to look into the future and decide what the next hot collectible, commodity, stock, whatever. That's what speculation is about. So like a, smart, a smart collector like picks up on those things pretty yeah. early. Yeah. yeah, if you're really attuned to pop culture and comic books yeah. or whatever, <clears> you, can, you can do fairly well. And if you got a little extra money, be like, well, I'm going to throw a couple extra... You know, some money at those. Or I'm going to buy all the copies of that right now. Because, like, if you would have bought Savage She-Hulk last year at this time, you'd clean up. Because it was, like, a 9-8 was right around 150 bucks. Right now, it's, like, $1,200. Yeah. Wow. So. That's crazy, actually. Those markets are crazy. Yeah, I didn't know, like, how, like, what entails being a collector like that. That's crazy. Like, all the yeah. stuff that goes into it. Yeah. Well, yeah. a collector is really, you, if you're going to be, in my opinion, going to just be a collector, you should just buy what you like. Yeah. You shouldn't worry about yeah. future value or any of those yeah. type of things. Yeah. If you want to get into the business side of it, then you have to start doing okay. those things. Because I've never even played a hand of Pokemon. No. Not one time. I don't <laughs> yeah. even know how to play the game. But I buy and sell the cards okay. because that's how I make my money. That's awesome. Okay. All right. That's good. Well, that's, that's teaching right. time with Tom. Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, these will be up on eBay, but they'll probably be on eBay before... This video gets actually produced. Delaney still has to edit it and everything. So one, the point is, is you should try to follow us ahead of time. Okay, uh, make sure you follow us on eBay because a lot of the a lot of the collectibles that we put up end up there first. And people are like, "Oh, well, I want to buy that." Well, you could have bought it, but you didn't follow me on eBay. Okay. So and she's going to be back in just a second with some more information for you. Thanks for watching, guys. Hey, allies! Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Hit the like and subscribe button to help us grow. Follow us on TikTok at Alliance Comics, Toys, and Games. Pretty much everything cool that comes in the store will end up on our TikTok, and it will eventually end up on our eBay at Alliance CTG. Follow us on Facebook. We have Facebook Live sales almost every Thursday night. And last but not least, follow us on Instagram for any updates. Thanks for watching. Bye!